the fun things about photography is getting your camera and trying to record events as they happen with family and friends. One of the things I recorded was my son learning about how to be a blacksmith. I used my Canon T6i and I used my GoPro. So these two things, I could get two different camera angles and a variety of different kind of shots. And so I challenged myself to put these together in a way to tell a story. And what's interesting is I showed this video to the guy that taught my son the blacksmith lesson. I said, you know, point out any mistakes I made. And so sure enough, I, I made some mistakes making this video. So at the very end of the video, I'll go back and correct myself. See if you can challenge yourself to figure out which mistakes I made that would be pointed out by a blacksmith. So one day my son comes to me with a question. I'm like, what son? Can we please get a forge? And I'm like, what are you planning on doing with a forge? Make armor, of course. And as much as the idea of playing with white hot steel scares me, it just so happened that at our church, a member of the congregation is kind and patient enough to invite us over and teach us all about it. So here's what I learned. Step one, positioning your tools. Before you light the forge and get ready to do anything, you're going to want to position your tools in a triangular fashion. And this is because when you heat the steel and you hammer steel, things are going to heat up and cool down so fast, you don't want to be walking back and forth. So you want everything to be in one spot. Step two, building the volcano. The coal forge consists of a table with a vented crater in it. While amateur scientists are not sure, they think these craters were formed using a cannonball. To start the forge, the crater is filled with coal and a small amount of kindling. This quickly catches fire to produce green smoke with a very questionable nature, just like a real volcano. As the coal begins to ignite, more coal is piled around the crater, building a scaled-down volcano-shaped mountain. Water is added to this area and tamped into shape. The damper on the vent is open to allow the forge to reach an operating temperature of 3,500 degrees. Wait a minute. Let me Google the temperature of lava. Okay, well lava averages just 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So a real volcano would probably heat way too slow for a blacksmith. Well, if a forge is way hotter than a volcano, why doesn't the bottom melt out and lava pour onto the ground? The answer to this question may surprise you, and it is the vent providing oxygen to the forge also keeps the bottom of the forge cool. This is not too dissimilar to how frozen bits of ice are always falling off of NASA's upside-down blacksmith forges that go flying through the air. Now back to the story. Step 3. Heating the iron. At some point, your homemade volcano will calm down, and this is when you place your steel into the core. Then you take a poker and make your volcano as angry as you can by causing some serious flames and sparks to fly, just like your family dog barking at an Amazon delivery driver. In a matter of seconds, your iron will be white hot and ready to strike on the anvil. Step 4. Striking the steel. The footage you see here is actually in real time. Watch closely as the steel cools down in a matter of 20 seconds. The color in the surface will noticeably change. Once it is only glowing dark red, it is time to place it back in the fire. The process of heating and hammering the steel is repeated and may include bending the steel around the horn of the anvil. Here I placed a close-up lens on my GoPro and placed it very close to the forge and filmed at 120 frames a second. After this, my GoPro crashed a few times so it may have overheated just a bit. Once the desired results are achieved, the steel is placed in a bucket of water to quench it. Here's my son's first blacksmith lesson. And this was making a hook. Mistake number one, the steel was not white hot. 
When white hot steel is exposed to oxygen, it will begin to burn and look very much like a sparkler on the 4th of July. In reality, the steel was orange as it was pulled from the forge and hammered. Earlier, my camera settings editing made the steel look white hot simply because I thought that would make the video look a lot more cool. Mistake number two, the coal was not volcano shaped. A volcano shape will vent the heat straight up. In reality, the coal in the forge was piled up more into a cave shape. This allows the heat to be reflected back downwards to make the forge much more effective at heating the steel. Mistake number three, the triangle of tools does not include the bucket of water. While not mentioned in the video earlier, the triangle of tools includes a vise for working the hot steel. It is important that this be placed right next to the forge, just like an anvil. And for some bonus material. After turning off the vent of the forge and allowing it to cool, you can find what are called clinkers in the coal. These are impurities that are made mostly of metals that have melted together while the forge was hot. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more content.